Okay, then uh, good morning again. And um, after last night's uh, pretty cold party, there were almost no axe fights, just a few. So I didn't see any skull splitting. Uh, there might be some medieval hangover, but probably not that much either. And if you were lifting a very heavy cup yesterday, then enjoy your lead poisoning, medieval style. <laughs> anyway, uh, returning back to my uh, black on white slides after the departure last year, where it was the reverse. Uh, and uh, this year, uh, I will talk about a, a more, more practical implementation of Zabbix, all the small everyday problems that we might be encountering at Nokia with Zabbix and how we solve most of those. For the first time, I have a slide about me, I think, and uh, I've been using Zabbix since 2001. Uh, I had a very, very great pleasure to work together with the Zabbix team for more than five years. Uh, they're great, they're just awesome. And uh, I've had a couple of books on Zabbix, and one actually just came out that's on 3.0. Uh, it's kind of thick. So um, I, I found it actually to be helpful yesterday myself when I was preparing for the LLD workshop. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of happy about it as well. Uh, also, uh, while working on these slides, uh, for most of the time, I had some music playing in my head, which might be because I'm crazy. Maybe that's related to Zabbix, maybe not. Uh, but uh, at least half of the slides have some music reference. So if you are terribly bored by this topic, then feel free to look for the song references and stuff like that. Um, so this is about uh, how we use uh, Zabbix at Nokia in one single division only. Uh, but uh, when people say, Nokia, what is the first thing that comes to mind? <laughs> so uh, something like this, probably. Nokia became extremely famous and, and probably the most famous phone that I think many of you actually have had yourself, probably. Or at least you know somebody who had it. It was kind of good. There were even memes like this. Uh, but uh, even though it was really great, and uh, that, that, that's kind of past. That's who he was. Uh, and uh, Nokia has changed significantly. Actually, the phone business has been sold away. As I think most of you know, it was sold to Microsoft, and then it, it has fluctuated around a bit. Uh, so Nokia now is working on uh, telecommunication industry, both hardware and different solutions, software, uh, software as a service as well. And uh, Nokia is a huge company. So um, I will talk about using Zabbix in a single division of Nokia, which does not mean that it's used everywhere, which doesn't mean that it's not used everywhere. Uh, but this is just about this small piece of the company. And uh, we also use a lot of different solutions. Even in this division, we use several monitoring products. And uh, I have to add that this is not an endorsement as well. And uh, briefly on uh, what we have currently. So uh, we don't have 3.0. We have 2.4, and that's a production instance. So uh, to make things a bit more complicated, we also have a testing instance of 2.4. We have yet another 2.4 instance of, for development. And uh, as we have several environments, we also have another 2.2 instance, which is production as well. And all these are the new systems. So 2.4, 2.2, that's our new Zabbix servers. And um, we also have Zabbix 1.8 still in production. That was some topic about this today earlier. I think Alex Say mentioned some about, something about upgrading to latest versions and stuff like that. We are in the process of this. Uh, but uh, when people see that we have this old version, they, they think that what, what, uh, what problems you might have uh, caused by it. And I'll touch a bit on that. Uh, that 1.8 instance, it's not the only one. We have two of them still in production. And uh, then. Uh, Besides all of the Zabbix servers, we also have, we use a lot of the Zabbix agents, and they are almost all of the versions in this range. Actually, we do have 3.0 Zabbix working with all of these servers, which is officially not supported, because only uh, more recent server versions are supported with older agent versions. Uh, but based on our testing, testing all of the features that we require, they work perfectly fine, so we are just mixing and matching the versions quite wildly. Uh, so talking about the usage of still using 1.8, uh, I've heard from quite a few people both today and uh, many years before that as well. And uh, Zabbix developers are sometimes surprised, like, hey, why are they using this version? We released this new version like a month ago or, or three months ago. And um, uh, 
The new version has this great feature. You should upgrade. You must upgrade uh, and, and insert your own version of why this is maybe not the greatest idea to run the old uh, release. So I, I'm not really defending use of old releases, but I'd like to touch a bit on uh, try to explain why uh, especially bigger companies might not, not be running the latest version. And uh, some of you might have heard of the rule, uh, the, about the rule of uh, dot four. Some, of, uh, some people actually call it the rule of dot six. Uh, and that rule basically says, let somebody else test the first few releases, and we will migrate when it's dot four. Uh, so uh, it's not a really a strict rule, but uh, for those who maybe don't have uh, that much primary time to invest in the monitoring solution, it, it helps actually a bit. Uh, the second reason, obviously, if it works, uh, don't touch it. Just, just if you touch it, you're responsible for it, right? So you have to fix it. And the third reason is it's complicated. And it's not like, hey, it's complicated. I, I want to talk about it. It's more like it's actually a very complicated environment. It's not a huge environment. Uh, each of these Zabbix instances has around maybe 1,000, a bit more hosts in it. But uh, it's, I would probably use the word entangled. Uh, if you start a fresh Zabbix instance, if you start maybe a, even a fresh uh, whole IT infrastructure, you can create some very polished uh, infrastructure, some very polished instance that is easy to upgrade, it's very easy to maintain. Over the years, it will have start, there's some fungus all growing over there, some mushroom there, some moss on that corner. And um, all of this makes it very hard to actually touch that system, because you touch it, this one thing, a single component, and some three others break somewhere else. Because uh, all of the monitoring that's implemented uh, in this environment, uh, while we use a lot of the built-in features like Zabbix agents, obviously, some SNMP, uh, there's a lot of custom integration for all kinds of software. Most of that actually developed in-house. Uh, the instances of Zabbix that I mentioned, that's not all we have. Uh, we have a few more customer-specific instances. Uh, there are uh, some other Zabbix instances that I don't even know about. They're, I just know that they exist somewhere. I don't know which version they are, but we have some other teams inside this division running them. Uh, but uh, we intentionally keep all these instances very separate. We do have some problems because of that, like the template synchronization, but... Uh, it helps us uh, to contain, let's say, if there's an overload in one instance, it's much, much easier to deal with. Uh, if one instance starts to crash for whatever reasons, it's obviously much easier to deal with as well. Um, yeah, we are planning to deploy 3.0. Uh, we consider that a pretty much cutting edge at this point still, even though it's been out for, what is it, half a year, maybe a bit more, and um, we'll get it eventually. Uh, talking about the backend, for Zabbix 1 to 8, we are using Oracle backend, and uh, for all of the new versions, pretty much we are moving to MySQL, MariaDB, one of the, from that family. Uh, the main reasons are the uh, obviously the licensing, and closely related to that, we don't want to run a separate instance of Oracle for each of these Zabbix uh, installations. So uh, the 1 to 8 instances actually share the Oracle database with other production systems, and we've had quite a few cases where the production system was rather busy and the monitoring went really nuts and that's not a good thing. So uh, don't run your monitoring database uh, on the same database engine as some other production, especially systems. Um, the important things that we are using that maybe I would say are, are the, the important features in Zabbix that uh, we like, uh, we do a lot of integration, so that's scripts mostly. Uh, we have quite a lot of those scripts also using Zabbix API, modifying the configuration, like adding items, triggers, uh, actions, and so on. And uh, we, have, we have started, uh, not that long ago, actually, on moving towards lots and lots of JMX monitoring. So the Java Gateway is an important thing for us, uh, and Java is very popular enterprise. Uh, why? I might touch on that a bit later as well. So, yeah, uh, and uh, after this not very short introduction, I'll try to touch on the three main topics. So how we are trying to upgrade from 1.8 to, to more recent versions and what uh, trouble we are facing. Uh, some other trouble that we might be seeing and uh, 
more on the how we solve these different issues that we have. Uh, or let's say uh, the trouble part or the problem part will be about uh, the things that where we don't have nice solutions, and the solution part will be about problems where we have something that is rather maybe nicer. So the upgrading, uh, we are going from 1.8 to 2.4. Uh, we still have that 2.2 instance. We kind of got stuck there at some point. And uh, yeah, so the companies, especially bigger environments, they do sit on the older releases for the previously mentioned reasons. And upgrading is an effort. It's a time that you have to take away from something else, which you usually don't have. So you try to postpone the upgrading when you have some time, which usually doesn't arrive. So you do the upgrade in parallel with something else. Uh, so you have to be kind of careful because you will not have much time to fix everything that breaks because of the upgrade. Uh, talking about breaking, um, so in our environment, especially when we, what we see is that uh, we do the upgrade, something breaks, and then we try to figure out, okay, what broke, where, why, and how to fix it. So we see that, for example, there are broken items. There obviously is no documentation for them because they were implemented like ages ago. And uh, they just stopped getting data. The person who worked on this has moved uh, uh, on like years ago, so you can't really ask somebody, hey, how does this work? Uh, so the investigation has to continue. Uh, so we have to figure out what does this integration do? What does this monitoring do? Uh, even if you have found that out, you have to still figure out how to fix it. But even if you, uh, before you get to that, you sometimes have to figure out where the hell is that integration happening. You have these trapper items on Zabbix. They get the data. You don't even have an idea where the data is coming from. So, uh, and that takes away from your precious time, which uh, really makes the upgrading more complicated than it probably should be. Uh, one more specific example uh, is about uh, a script which was using the Zabbix API, and uh, we, we, we were moving from those 1.8 instances to the 2.2 and 2.4 instances. So obviously, user authenticate method that was used by the script, that got removed, so you just have to figure that out, change that, okay, good. Uh, user login method stopped allowing the auth parameter. Then the item description in the item methods were, was, create, uh, was changed from uh, description to name. Um, then the, there were the exists methods that the script relied on. Those got removed. Then obviously the script was creating triggers, and the trigger syntax changed from the ampersand and pipe to a, literal and or words. So you have to change that. And once you have figured all that, turns out the script actually eventually parses the output of Zabbix Center, which was changed as well. And all of this, it's not like you just look at the script and go like, oh, I'll fix these things. You figure out where one of them is broken, and that's not always easy because the script might be using some pretty obscure and un unmaintained API library. So now you have your own fork of the library. And then one by one, you fix all of these. And then you have your working script. So you think you're good, right? <laughs> It still fails on some of the new systems. And uh, remember we had 2.2 and 2.4? So actually one of them uses ampersands and pipes for trigger syntax, one uses and or. So eventually we have three versions of the script. One using the old API methods, old sender syntax. One using the new API methods, new sender, but ampersand and pipe as in 2.2. And then the third script version using the new API sender, but literal and or as since 2.4. And that's just one script. So um, I'll be ready to talk to people when they would still, if they still have questions about why you postpone upgrades, I, I might have more examples of, if this is not enough. Um, another uh, thing which we hit when we were upgrading, uh, 1.8 was patched. Uh, to have a link that shows uh, directly the item graph, the simple graph. Uh, this was not needed in 2.2, maybe that got implemented in 2.0, but in 2.2 it's not, need not needed anymore, so we changed the uh, actions, we stopped patching this thing. Uh, and then in 2.4 that broke again because the uh, URL syntax was changed and the old syntax, the compatibility with that was not uh, kept. That's yet another thing which was taking some time out of our upgrade time. Uh, Java Gateway. Uh, I mentioned that we are moving to Java a lot, but uh, Java Gateway out of the box only supports RMI, and uh, we needed IIOP, uh, T3, and some other endpoints. Uh, so we had a patched uh, 2.0 Zabbix Java Gateway, which supported all of these endpoints that we needed on, and it also supported uh, ability to query one JMX host on different ports. Uh, the problem is that uh, 
2.0 actually had a bug where if the gateway hits an instance, a JMX instance that never times out, the gateway itself doesn't time out. So you get a stuck gateway. Um, there's not always the time to fix things properly, so forward porting the patch right away is not possible and so on, and upgrading the gateway is not possible. So uh, the solution, yeah. Uh, remove command, just restart the Islamic Java gateway automatically. Uh, we still have it in place on one system. Uh, on other systems, we have uh, the gateway upgraded, but on that 2 to 2 production instance, this uh, solution of, a, of an automatically restarted Islamic Java gateway is still in place. It's limited to a single specific trigger, so it's kind of not that invasive, but uh, yeah, that's the real world problem solving way sometimes, unfortunately. Uh, Another problem uh, that we faced with uh, these, using all of these different Zabbix versions, uh, the Zabbix server uh, was working stable, one of the two to two older releases, and then it suddenly started crashing like once per day or something like that. Turns out that was a bug which was fixed some time ago. Um, in this case, we kind of jumped for it and uh, we upgraded it eventually, but the first solution was some other Zabbix server, just restart that Zabbix server. So that got us through a few more days, weeks, when we finally got to the upgrade. Uh, templates. Uh, as we have all these different Zabbix versions, let's say you have a template that you have upgraded or, or modified in 2.4, you have improved that template. You'd like to get that template from 2.4 to 2.2, which is kind of an example why it's maybe not that great idea to have multiple Zabbix instances in production, but still. So obviously the first import in 2.2 fails, and hey, yeah, obviously it's the trigger syntax change again, so now we change from and or the new syntax back to the old of ampersands and pipes. Uh, then, hey, in the XML you have to use the HTML entities, you have to do some more changes. Uh, when you make this change, you have to pay attention because in the new version, you have mandatory spaces around the operators and or in trigger expressions. In old versions, they could have used the spaces or not. So if you pick the wrong version, you just create duplicate triggers there, if they existed in that version of the template. So you have to match the, the whatever spacing was used in that, uh, in our case, to the two instance. And uh, then you have to remember to all do all that again for the trigger dependencies. Um, as part of our migration effort from one to take to the more recent systems, we were also migrating the user data as much as possible. And so we tried to use the API for that at first. Uh, unfortunately, in 1.8, uh, that doesn't return user media information, so we just went into the database and just kind of grabbed that information directly and then uh, used the API in the new instance to import the user media. <clears throat> That was more about the problems, but uh, there are also the great things when you are upgrading, and uh, this is a lot of this is my personal impressions because when you work inside of Zabbix, you sometimes see how people use Zabbix and what problems they may be facing, and may very often you don't. So uh, these are the things that I found very important. And uh, usability is improving with every new version of Zabbix. There might be a few places where it actually does regress, but uh, it usually improves. And a very important thing is different links from one section to another. These tiny, tiny things that many people don't notice, they even miss them in release notes and wherever. Uh, when you use 1.8 and 2.2 and 2.4 daily, you notice that those small links, they just, you just love them. Uh, the general maintainability of Zabbix, so the error messages are getting more useful. There's uh, the runtime log level reloading. It's much, much easier to work with a new, newer or more recent Zabbix version uh, when you have those features. You know what's broken and you know how to fix it much sooner. Uh, another thing that we noticed, new lines and trigger expressions are supported now, so trigger expressions can be readable already in the Zabbix interface instead of copying them somewhere and formatting them manually or automatically. Uh, did I say something about links being great and from one Zabbix in interface location to another? They're just awesome. Uh, there's one thing that I noticed that the simple graphs in older versions had this link to latest data to all of the items for that host, which is missing in 3.0, unfortunately. So in our case, when people click on a graph link in their email, in the alert email, they sometimes want to see other items on that host, which is broken in 3.0 and uh, 
I don't know how they might react to that. They might not notice. They might notice it when 3.0 is finally in our environment. Uh, it's really great that the dropdowns as multiple choices are being eliminated in the front end. It's one of those things, again, when you maybe don't notice it if you use one version daily, but if you use several, like two, three different versions daily, you see that, okay, that without a dropdown, it's great. Uh, other minor things like the uh, administration users, user groups. You don't have to do the extra click to users and then switch the dropdown to user groups. These minor things, it's like they, they, they are very obvious at some point. Uh, the things we appreciate, they are long term, they are non shiny things. When you change the design, the customers probably notice. All the users go, wow. But uh, the poor, as the, the comedian John Oliver says, peasants in many cases, when they're working with Zabbix, when they have to perform some task, they gloss over that after a few hours, probably, I guess. So, um, yeah, and at some point you have to ask, where's the beef? And then the runtime log level changing comes in, and you go like, that's the most awesome feature in Zabbix since 1.0, probably. Because that saves you time. And uh, Zabbix has, with each new release, less bugs, which is really great. It might not be that obvious when you look at some of the early releases, but uh, it really is like that, and that's a really, really great achievement of the development team, obviously. Uh, and whenever I see some developer commenting like, this error message, can we make it more user-friendly? I get this warm, fuzzy feeling, you know, like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll just sit like this for five minutes and I'll appreciate that moment. It doesn't happen that often. When it happens, thank you, the developers and everybody else may be involved there. So yeah, upgrading to 3.0, yeah. <laughs> we are thinking about it, let me put it like that. Uh, I might have something to talk about uh, maybe next year, we'll see. Uh, we have investigated slightly this, and we see that there might be some problems, like the mentioned link loss in the simple graph page. Uh, another problem is that if you're importing an uh, SNMP template that uses LLD, uh, you get burned because the XML import doesn't convert the LLD rule syntax, and it doesn't work. You have to update it manually for all of the LLD rules. Uh, so we have the short list that we know that we'll have to pay attention to when we get to 3.0. Yeah, that's the uh, ZBX uh, number for this specific problem. Uh, the, in general, I, I would probably say that uh, the, our instance of Zabbix is like a human. There's very few humans who are perfect health-wise, so uh, the cynical doctor might go, just, might go just like, hey, can you get to the door? Yeah, well, you're good, you're healthy. Uh, well, or maybe like, you have pimples, well, live with it. There's always some errors somewhere, there's some problems, they're minor, ignore them, whatever. Uh, or in some cases, maybe you've got herpes, well, live with it, whatever. That's for some Zabbix instances. Uh, we have this internal joke, which is mostly a joke, but all jokes have some small part of truth in it, and we're, we're sometimes people say that we're afraid to look at the Zabbix log files. We know there's something broken, we'll have to fix it when we see it, so we just kind of don't look at it if we don't need it right now. Um, other trouble regarding migrating from one solution to another, this is maybe not directly related to Zabbix versions, but still. Uh, we had a network discovery that has a custom script returning tags like this is and this, this, this is running on this box. So that got rewritten, but unfortunately it wasn't completely changed and some of the tags were reused. Not all of the, uh, not all of the actions were updated properly. So in the end, uh, it was all messed up and we were not getting away with it. Uh, the audit, uh, unfortunately, wasn't very helpful because there's this uh, guest user making all the changes to Zabbix, so we kinda uh, didn't get much help there. Uh, we had to review all, pretty much all of the hosts. Uh, we did, did some automation there, but we had to review them and actually fix this. Uh, another fun that we had with actions was that there is no built-in way to test, act test actions right now, uh, so uh, what was done to test the single action uh, create the trapper item, have a trigger, specify that trigger in the action to see whether the action will work properly, that is restarting the Java gateway, if I recall correctly in that case. So you test that by sending the value to the trapper item, that fires, action matches, so you happily um, test the action, you delete the test item and trigger, you email everybody saying that all is good, I tested the action, it's restarting the gateway, so it's great. Uh, what's wrong? Yes, action was disabled because you deleted the condition in the action and that happened completely silently. 
So if you don't take a look at that action afterwards, you will never notice. And actually, that was a problem which was discussed on the Isabix RSC quite a lot. And there's a script which allows you to monitor an action by ID. If you have these important actions, and if somebody un accidentally, mistakenly disables them, you can actually monitor that they are enabled. So very raw, very hackish, but hey, it helps. And unfortunately, the action simulator, which will be covered uh, later in this conference, wouldn't have helped here because, well, the conditions are like this, so what do you expect? In this case, we didn't want to know whether the action would fire. We, would, we, we kind of wanted to know whether uh, this, the command would work as expected. So for the testing, it wouldn't help. Um, another problem is that uh, very often we have a lot of people working on Zabbix because uh, the attitude is like uh, that uh, there shouldn't be a single point of failure, so there shouldn't be a single or even a few people working with one solution. Everybody kind of works with everything. And uh, people who are maybe not that experienced with Zabbix, they often create a new item and they go like, oh, it's not working because I send the value and it's not appearing. But there's this uh, strange bug in the timeline where sometimes it doesn't show either one or several ol uh, oldest values. So when you have an item with a single value, you often see that item has no values. Uh, that's quite confusing every now and then. Another confusion is uh, when something alerts, people might go and take a look at the alert and see, hey, it shows one, uh, it shows a solid line at one, so everything is good. Uh, but uh, that's a trapper item. So I guess quite a few should, a few should probably know what that means. And that means that there's just line drawn whenever there's a single value even. So that's uh, not very good in this case. Uh, I think I'm running out of time. I'll try to overrun for five minutes, and I'll see how far I get. I have, a, I guess, lots of topics discovered here. Uh, my favorite things in Zabbix, uh, my favorite page was monitoring Zabbix because it kind of showed you all of the problems in Zabbix. I really liked it. But uh, it's made nearly useless because when new systems are added either by auto one of the discovery options uh, or manually, uh, all of the new triggers, they first switch to the OK state and then they blink in that page. So you get like half of that page is, is blinking OK triggers most of the time. Uh, but well, in 3.2, that page is removed, so I guess <laughs> that problem is gone. Um, we also saw a problem where some items suddenly start failing. With error message saying that 82 comma 82 is not supported for uh, the, not for float, but for numeric, oh, no, sorry, for float, that's good, yeah, so for numeric float item. Uh, and it's like, hey, wait, why, why is there a comma, actually? And uh, some tools like iOSTAT, for example, they use the user locale, so whoever started the, either the Zabbix agent or Zabbix server daemon, so user parameters or external checks, that determines the locale. And some locales will give you comma as the decimal separator, which Zabbix will not like. Uh, so uh, you could do that probably in the init scripts or some other way you control the daemons, but in our case, uh, we just uh, do that in, uh, we try to do that in all of our scripts. We just set the C locale and we're good with that. Uh, curl, by the way, is the same. Uh, if you do something like this and return curl var variables for the uh, time spent or the download speed, if you don't use the proper locale, you get comma, uh, values with comma decimal separator and they will fail to uh, go into Zabbix. Yeah, so we, used, we, we, we went for fixing that directly in our scripts. Um, Scripts uh, tend to break every now and then for various reasons. Maybe they were not perfectly written, maybe there were some other issues, but uh, when they break, items turn unsupported, we get no alerts. So what we try to do, we try to review the unsupported items manually, which is a very good idea to do in the current versions of Zabbix. When 3.2 comes out, actually, and this was not mentioned in the uh, features of 3.2, and I know that some people have uh, named uh, this the greatest feature in Zabbix ever, which I disagree, the runtime log level changing was the greatest feature ever. But this one is close. The no data trigger will fire on unsupported items in 3.2, and we'll probably have a hell of a time because everything will fire, but it will be all for the greater good. We'll fix that eventually. Uh, and that was the reaction on no data um, working on unsupported items. Um, that was the immediate one. I guess later there were more rejoicing. Uh, Another issue might be that your scripts might not work exactly as intended, so the log files might not be removed. Quick solution, just monitor that the log files are not being removed and go and remove them manually. It hasn't happened that often, right? So you just, you have to solve it right now. Just, uh, technically, directories would be better because they are atomic, but hey, in this case, the, the, the files worked uh, quite well. Uh, 
Another use case of using different Zabbix versions where uh, there were problems. Uh, a template, you cannot really migrate it uh, easily from newer to older Zabbix versions as discussed earlier. There are all kinds of issues. Sometimes you can fix them, sometimes you just go like, I'll just recreate that LLD rule manually. So you do that manually, you forget to add the LLD filter, obviously, and uh, you get a real lots of items on a busy database server. So nothing broke, but you kind of felt not that good. Um, am I already way over time or just a bit over time? Yeah, there's zero showing, okay. Um, so uh, yeah, I think I, I'm not even close to all the topics, but uh, I'll try to cover just a few more things that we have uh, discovered. Uh, Starting with Zabbix 1.8 that we are using, we were having these uh, different services running on different ports on the same machine, like JVMs, uh, web servers, and so on. And monitoring that with Zabbix is fairly hard, actually. Uh, so what we ended up having is a single template per port, but that is very, very hard to maintain. You end with something like this. And these are just the templates for monitoring the same thing on different ports on the same host. And as you can see, over time, they got really disconnected. So they have different amounts of items and triggers, and they are all different. So don't try not to do that. Try to do LLD or something. And uh, we, we, were still, we still haven't fixed that ourselves, but uh, uh, it's on our to-do list. So yeah, uh, multiple JVMs. Uh, we currently have a patch Java Gateway that actually supports uh, querying multiple JVMs on different ports on the same host. Uh, but we will probably be moving towards having separate hosts for individual JVMs. It's much easier to maintain. And uh, when you're adding the Zabbix maintenance, you can add that on a single JVM. Because if you have them on the same host, you can't do that. You can just put the whole host in maintenance. And that covers all of the JVMs. Uh, Yet another thing is the API scripting. We use this a lot. Um, let me skip over the details, but uh, uh, we saw a strange load on Zabbix when there was uh, triggers seemingly created and then deleted. It turns out the script had tiny, tiny logic problem where the function get trigger ID just goes and deletes the trigger and then it has to be created again. Like, eh. Yeah, so uh, check your API scripts actually. Even if they seem to work initially, they might have Weird strings like uh, weird things like this, and uh, also check that your API scripts actually log out. Otherwise, you'll have hundreds of thousands of uh, user sessions, which slows down a few operations with the Zabbix. Uh, the issues that we were seeing with the Zabbix API: the new users trying to work with the API, the error messages when they exist, they, they just totally destroy them because it's like invalid parameters or something, and they are very at loss. Uh, there was a lot of missing functionality in the API. This is getting better. For example, 3.0 added the value mapping API, so that was really awesome. Uh, so in the recent versions, the API mostly works for us. Um, so I think I'll have to give private presentations to anybody who would like to hear more about this specific instance. Uh, I think I way over on the time, so maybe there's still like a couple of minutes for questions, if any. Yes, of course, there are definitely five minutes for questions, so please go ahead and ask your questions to Richards. Too many problems. <laughs> so uh, I do not see any hands. Okay. So then in this case, no questions. Thank you very uh, much. Alexander was suggesting that I might have then a few more slides on detail. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if, yeah, a few more just uh, things that we are uh, suffering from. Uh, the, uh, we have lots of users working on Zabbix, so the audit log, not recording many operations. Uh, we don't have a solution for this. We just uh, have to trust our coworkers, uh, which um, is kind of good, kind of not. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, synchronizing the template between the 2.2, 2.4, and 1.8 instances in many cases, it's very hard. Uh, we do hope that once we have gotten rid of 1.8, we will implement automatic syncing using the API. If somebody has done that, uh, I'd be interested in discussing that. I've seen some hands, so that's great. Uh, the problems that I covered here, none of them was pretty much massive, but that's what gives you the impression about the product, about the implementation. It's the daily minor issues and how you try to deal with them. Uh, and actually one of the things uh, that I personally discovered that was kind of a surprise for me actually, uh, was that uh, when the person is on call when they have all these notifications, 
the dashboard element latest 20 issues, it's great. I never used it before, but now I appreciate it because it only shows you the currently active problems, uh, the most recent problems. You can filter it to only show the unacknowledged problems. Uh, it's, it's a surprisingly good uh, element in the dashboard. And uh, you also notice that uh, in one to take, you cannot reor reorder the dashboard elements. You can do that in recent versions. So minor things, you notice them. And uh, I was afraid to figure out whether in one to take collapsed dashboard elements still load the data in background. <laughs> I, I, I skipped that. Um, and um, in our environment, Zabbix obviously gives, uh, it sends out immediate alerts about something being down, but it also supports lots of other decisions like uh, if some software is acting weird, it's maybe not down, so there's no alert that something is down, but we might get an alert that some resource usage is out of hand, maybe there's some bandwidth usage. So uh, it gives us an idea that we should report this to the development team. And uh, Zabbix is also used quite a lot for capacity planning, so we can see the resource usage and uh, how we uh, align, assign them. Uh, another uh, thing we did was that we saw that on database servers, in some cases, there was some misconfiguration where maybe databases or some other things were using the root file system, so that kind of killed the performance. Uh, there were people uh, doing uh, temporary output in the root file system, in one case, filling it up a bit. Uh, so we added uh, on Solaris database server special monitoring that alerted uh, us when only on the root file system there was uh, disk activity. Uh, but uh, this was probably the, the easiest way to figure out uh, the low-level discovery for Solaris partitions, giving out their mount point as well. If somebody knows a better way, if you can optimize that, let me know. We ended up with this. Uh, there were also interesting problems where the join command, depending on the input on Solaris, would sometimes hang, and we just went off. Oh, we just skipped that. Like, that. We'll not use it. We'll not investigate the uh, Solaris tools. Uh, and... Um, a suggestion that I would have if you have more than one person modifying Zabbix, have some guidelines, like on how to do the templates, items, triggers, uh, how to actually manage all that configuration. Uh, the uh, documentation on Zabbix org, there's a template guideline page already. Uh, we actually took that as a baseline and then we slightly modified that. We kind of painted the guardrails in this case uh, for our own uh, use. So we added things like Add the comment to all of the triggers saying what must be done by the on-call person. Uh, don't or, or try not to make the triggers fire when the uh, conditions slightly are getting worse. So when the error count increases. Because what happens is that when the error count then flatlines, the trigger resolves. So the person who might not be familiar with the trigger, they see that something fired, something resolved, so all is good. Uh, and uh, avoid cron jobs to feed the data because uh, then you might have to hunt down which system is sending the data even. Uh, there's, again, on zabbix.org, a uh, simplistic uh, example of how you can use ATD, the AT daemon, for uh, feeding data back to Zabbix without using cron jobs. And for the second time, I'm run out of time, and, uh, and thank you for your patience. Yeah. Thank you, Richard.